Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. We've already seen how to add memory and processors to a virtual machine when it's powered off. If you're not sure how to do that, please see the VMware vSphere 5 Virtualization Basics training on ITDVDs.com. Now let's talk about adding memory and CPUs when the virtual machine is powered on. So this is also called hot adding. So first off, your guest operating system has to support it. So if I right click on this virtual machine, open up a console here, I'm running Windows Server 2008 Data Center. Or Windows Server 2008 R2 Data Center. That supports both hot add memory and hot add CPU. If you're trying to add hot add memory, Windows 2008 or Windows 2008 R2 Enterprise both support hot add memory, but they don't support hot add CPU. So again, you just need to check and make sure that your guest operating system supports it. I'm going to go ahead and log into this virtual machine here. I'm going to go ahead and launch Task Manager so we can just take a look at it. I'm going to go to the Performance tab here. We can see the total memory I've got in this one, 6 gigs. And the number of processors is 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've got 4 processors, 6 gigs of memory. And if we go out here, go to VM, Edit Settings, we can see that that's correct. So we can see my memory here and the number of CPUs is 4. Now this is grayed out right now. We have to configure this virtual machine so that it allows us to hot add memory and hot add processor. To do that we go into options and we go down here to memory slash CPU hot plug and I cannot configure it while it's powered on. So I have to actually power it off then configure it then power it back on and then I'll be able to hot plug or hot add memory and CPU. So if we have an operating system on a virtual machine that can handle this, we may want to just configure it right off the bat so that we don't have to shut it down, configure it, and then power it back on. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and shut this one down so that we can configure it. Okay, it's shut down, so let's go over here. Right click, edit settings, and let's go to our options. Highlight memory and CPU hot plug. See, now I can select it. Now, memory hot add, my guest operating su system supports it against Windows 2008 R2 uh, data center. Hot plug CPU, a lot of operating systems don't support this, so it's kind of a rare operating system that does. Windows Server 2008 R2 Data Center is one of those operating systems that does support it. So I'll go ahead and click OK. So I haven't changed the CPU or memory. I'm just enabling the ability to hot add memory or CPU. So now let's go ahead and power it on. And I'll open up a console to it here. And I'll go ahead and log in just so we can take a look at it again. Okay, and I'm going to launch Task Manager. And we can see we've got our four CPUs and our six gigs of memory. So now let's go back up, edit our settings. Now we'll notice we can change it. So it's not grayed out anymore for memory or CPU. So memory, let's say I want to bump it up to eight gigs. You notice if I press the down arrow, it's not going to let me shrink the amount of memory. For that, we have to shut shut it off. We can only add. So I'm going to go up to 8 gigs. And let's give it 3 sockets, 2 uh, cores per socket. That gives me a total of 6 logical processors. So you can see I can't change the number of cores per socket, just the number of virtual sockets because we're we're adding processors here. We're not adding cores. Just like in the real world, we can't add a core to a processor, but we can add another processor that has multiple cores. And I'll click OK. 
And it lets me know that the number of installed processors has changed. The data displayed is invalid. Do I want to restart Task Manager? Yep, I'll go ahead and restart it. And there it is. So now we've got our six processors, our six logical processors, I should say, and our eight gigs of memory. And we did that without any downtime. So again, if our operating system, our guest operating system supports it, it's probably a good idea to go in and edit our settings, go to options, and basically allow enable memory and allow enable hot CPU if the guest operating system supports it so that we are ready to go if the virtual machine's already powered on and in production and we need to add memory or CPU to that without shutting it down.